What is sharding? So sharding is a L1 uh, scaling solution. There's a bunch of different scaling solutions. You can bigger block sizes, all this stuff. But sharding is this technology that like just make uh, you know, Ethereum or, or whatever L1 using it um, just work better and faster and, and all this stuff. So traditionally, each node stores the entire chain state and processes all these transactions. Uh, great for security, but it limits the scalability as we can't process uh, any more transactions than a single node can. So it has the entire state. It's kind of like this monolithic system. Again, great for security, but uh, you know, sharding is, is is trying to improve on this. So that's why when you hear like Bitcoin is limited to three to three to seven transactions per second, you know, Ethereum seven to fifteen, so on, all this stuff. That that's why because they're limited by by these uh, by the by the fundamentals here. So other solutions like sharding exist. Like like I mentioned, block size increase or, or limits and stuff on that. But that, those things can, uh, you got to be careful not to roll out nodes on commodity hardware because you don't want to turn everything into a supercomputer. Like, and, and you have to like use this, you, you want it, you know, so that's kind of the point against decentralization of it. They can try to do that. Or you have merge mining. Some of you may have heard of merge mining where there are many chains, but all the chains share the same mining and the same staking or mining or staking power. Like they just, they share the, the same power, uh, but there's different chains. Um, so you need to solve the problem without bottlenecks. So like one, as I mentioned, you don't want to make each node become a supercomputer. Like that's, that's it, it's going to hurt decentralization on and on. Or two, uh, you don't want to uh, make each node store like a terabyte of data because that's like bandwidth issues, storage issues. You get into stuff like that. So, and quickly, I want to say Merkle tree, please. People don't glaze your eyes over. I'm going to, I'm going to say Merkle tree in the simplest way I possibly can. Uh, in, you know, in computer science, there's different kinds of structures, things like that. A Merkle tree, and people come up with all these um, all these interesting ways, more efficient ways, algorithms, stuff like that. A Merkle tree is just a cryptographic hash tree. It's a structure. It can store a large amount of data, but it but it's made in a way that verifying each piece of the data, it can do it in a very short period of time compared to other structures. So that's why it's perfect for blockchains. Uh, you can use it, and you can quickly find out and you know go through the tree. You can search for stuff and. And just uh, it's very efficient for blockchain type stuff where you are, you know, you have this list of hashes and all this stuff like that. That's why you hear them using that in blockchain a lot. So anyway, sharding. Sharding is not new. Uh, sharding has been around. It's still used in database software to scale horizontally. So horizontal versus vertical scaling, scaling out. So adding more machines uh, would be horizontal scaling and versus vertical scaling, which is scaling up. So upgrading your hardware, new CPU, more memory, stuff like that. So it's been used in, used in database software for a while. In general, it's a way to let you keep the security. They, they figure out, you know, based on this, all this technology that, and all the coding and, and, and uh, uh, you know, algorithms and, and way to make this work. You can keep the security, but only let a few of the nodes verify transactions and the others can do other work. Uh, so basically letting it be more efficient by working on tasks on the blockchain in parallel splitting the data into chunks instead of like having everything as one, one particular synchronous transaction uh, that everybody has to sync and, and uh, pull down the data and verify. So you may say, oh, isn't that bad for security? All the nodes aren't validating transactions? No, they've, smarter people than us have figured this out. <laughs> Won't go into the, the gory details, uh, but they, they figured it out by splitting things into smaller thing, uh, smaller chunks and letting a process in parallel. So it's a way for Ethereum to scale, for example, you can get more data across the network. You can use it to work with the layer twos and make transactions cheaper uh, using uh, L2 solutions like ZK rollups, optimistic rollups, stuff like that. So um, there's you know execution sharding versus data sharding and all, all the intricacies of that. EIP 4844 uh, is the proto dank sharding. So dank sharding, uh, there's EIP that's kind of doing a preview of what dank sharding can do right now. And I watched a couple of videos on this to kind of, um, but it actually might be worth the hype at, uh, that. So you've heard Richard talk about EIP 1559. Oh, it was supposed to make transactions cheaper and all this stuff. That's actually, you know, that was maybe a, a that was, that was not what it was actually supposed to do. Everyone th hoped it would, but it was supposed to do something uh, other than that. And, um, this may be worth the hype. So EIP 4844 may be worth the hype that EIP 1559 was as it's dank sharding. Uh, and it's actually supposed to work with L2s to uh, decrease fees and, and help do stuff like that. 
Last thing I'll say, I know everyone's asleep right now, but bank sharding, what is bank sharding? Bank sharding is like the simpler, more efficient sharding design. It merges the shared data uh, with uh, the beacon chain data and speeds up the sync between L2 and L1. So it makes that it makes Ethereum work better with you know rollups and, and stuff like that. And I, I really like the way, so uh, I think Vitalik or someone else uh, saw a tweet on, put it like this. Uh, it's like BitTorrent in how data is distributed, but like blockchains in how consensus is secured. So it's a way to distribute and make the loads and, and blockchains work in parallel, but still maintain consensus in a blockchain way. So the more nodes, the more decentralized, the faster things go. That's what bank sharding also um, incentivizes. So it's, it sounds like a win-win uh, for the ecosystem. And uh, you never know, Pulse Chain will have bank sharding. That'd be cool as well uh, if we get some of those improvements too. So.